Welcome to Adventures in Platforming, where we are totally streaming Mega Man Legends 2. Totally. That's, that, ex Finally. that exists on the Xbox, I'm not sure if you do. Alright, so, we have a very important question. Mega Man Legends 2 HD Collection, what's your terrible question? No, don't play on hard. Proto Man or Mega Man? Uh, you're gonna have a bad time either way. Alright, we're doing Mega. Are we? Who has the charge? Like you're gonna get wrecked. Alright, we're doing Mega. Easy or normal? No, we're doing normal. And you are the exact person that could only scam Rocket Knight Adventures. What? What do you mean scam? What? So Rocket Knight Adventures is an amazing game, but they <laughs> screwed with difficulty settings in America. Like they made it deliberately to trick you into playing on too hard of a difficulty mode. Like in Japan, the difficulty modes were normal, hard, very hard, and crazy hard. In America, they were child. <laughs> normal and hard. They didn't actually change those difficulty settings, they just changed their views. Wonderful. You are the person Konami was tricking into playing on very hard. Konami is so great. They're tricking. Alright, which, which of Mega Man 10 is terrible bosses? Uh, do Mega Man stream with electric sheep? Alright. So, I guess a little history here. Mega Man 9 came out to great acclaim and was really good and stuff. A nice revival. Everyone loved Mega Man 9. A nice revival of 8 bit Mega Man. So, obviously, it got a sequel. The sequel is not very. not. not that great. The sequel is everything people associated with Mega Man game at the time, which is to say that it's way too hard and it's not actually very fun. Like, the weapons aren't very good, the stages are full of instant death traps. So, in other words, it's a nice revival of most of 8-bit Mega Man. <laughs> it's a nice revival of, like, you can cross out the words 8-bit there. It's, it's a nice revival of most side-scrolling Mega Man. Yeah. <laughs> like, Mega Man is a franchise that spawned hundreds of games and only has a handful of home runs. But we remember it because those home runs are great, but we also have to remember that they were like, 1 in 40. Yeah. With all those weird RPGs. How many, like, there's the Battle Network games, there's Command Mission, that's the weirdest RPG. Like, I think canonically, Command Mission is the last X game. And it's like, it's a really naked FF10 ripoff in 2005. It's baffling as to why it exists. But hey, at least it's not X6 or X7. True. Don't you own X7? I could have sworn that was something you bought. Yeah, I have all of them. Why? Why not? So I can... Did we not just discuss? So I could stream them for everyone's enjoyment. That was one of the ones I, I... streamed after the terrible uh, Neo Geo game. That was Neo Geo game. Uh, Wonder, that Wonder Swan. Swan. Whatever. Also, you What's important is it was seven. terrible. I did. <laughs> it was so bad. This stream well, I wasn't there for it, so it doesn't count. You were. I did it after the uh, Wonder Swan Color and then quickly quit it. Okay, play, then I just completely next. blocked it out of my mind. Yeah. I didn't play it very long because it was so bad. And I'm just like, I'm just going to put it in the, the X collection and uh, play Mega Man X. Yeah. And it was you, good. You resisted the temptation to go fight Wheel Skater. Yeah, it was hard. We've not talked about Mega Man 10 much. Excited for when this gets remade for the silver screen, they rename Sheep Man Blade Man. Oh, do you get it? Do you get my side eye joke? 
do. Blade Runner joke. Because the root title of the book Philip was Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep. I'm being a Philip K. Dick oh about it. This mini boss is stupid. <laughs> Oh man, like this, like this is one of those things that. Oh God! What? Like, no! No! This is one of those things that transferred straight into Mighty Number no. Nine, which was like this addiction to like the stage is too short. We need to pad it out. It's not a good way to make it longer. I just rage quit that stage because it started me back in the Wow, that, that was quick. <laughs> All right. Get used to that feeling. Is it, is it Strike Man next so you can beat a baseball? Oh my god! Oh my god, where is he? Uh, yes, yes, we're done with that. Uh, at least it's not Nitro Man. Why do I remember all these bosses get names? I played like seven minutes of this game. It's like, I hate this. What? This game is a home run. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you more than I hate this game. <laughs> if Mega Man 9 was a home run, Mega Man 10 was a grand slam. Who loaded the bases for this? Uh... Wait a minute, why aren't you playing as Bass? Stop it, Bass, why must we fight? Was he in this? Is he like DLC? He's, he's a DLC character, yes. Yeah, I'm not paying for that asshole. I believe he gets an air dash on a, like, an X character. Why? Why? What? I thought this was baseball. Why is there a soccer ball? Why it, am I it getting... is every sport! Oh. <laughs> like, why am There's I getting a, murdered by a Strike soccer Man ball? Himself, <laughs> but Strike Man himself. But Strike Man, you have to beat all the other sports to make, to make your way to baseball. Uh. I finally defeated soccer. I can move on to soccer 2 baseball. Uh, but yeah, like this is a game that I would imagine made money, but obviously displayed a worrying trend. Uh, people aren't that interested in us going back to this well over and over. Because, uh, I would imagine that the reason we, uh, didn't get Mega Man 11 wasn't Mega Man 10 didn't make money. It was, if we keep doing this, Mega Man 12 won't make money. It's, uh, that's, I'm just, that's just kind of how you have to do with risk mitigation. I'm just sad we never got a 16-bit the X series. Yeah, but that would have been way more expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's just, like, it's like why indie games haven't really done as much of a 16-bit revival. They just sort of went from, like, 8-bit to Flash. I wish I had Mega Man X X9. Wheel Gator's Revenge. That's the only thing you want. Yeah. My favorite thing, uh about video game translation is one, that Mega Man X's translation is hideous, but two, like, just as a series, not that it is, Mega Man X is one, either. Mega Man X's translation is hideous, and two, uh, they made a wise choice when they decided to not call, uh, like, when they decided to translate irregular as Maverick. Yeah. You have to hunt the irregulars. Yeah, uh... Man, you ever, you ever actually, like, looked at the kind of translations that Mega Man X games were having by the time we got to the PS1 era where they never shut up? No. Because, like, in the PS1 era, there's so much dialogue and all of it is awful. And it's also, it's like, bad dialogue translated badly. Why must we fight? Yeah, that's Mega Man 8, which is much funnier. Yeah, I hate an all this. amazing bit. Pieces, the thing, the thing that makes Mega Man 8 amazing <laughs> is that like Elmer Fudd, Doctor Light trips over a line, and they didn't cut out the part of him tripping over it. It's 
like that bit in Sonic 06, where, like, one of the side missions, the guy's, like, does the mind read wrong, starts over, and then starts, does the entire mind read, and they never cut out the part where he, where he did the mind read wrong. Seems weird. It's, it sure is a mark of the kind of body you had to do with the game. Sliding! Why? Sliding. I'm just gonna make reference to every Mega Man game. I'm Aquaman, but you can call me Handsome Guy. It's a uh, sensitive game. I actually don't hate Mega Man 8 though. It's not great, but... Better than 7. Yeah, 7... Well, 7 was made in 3 months. Really? Yeah. It shows. Yeah, it absolutely shows. The, the whole trajectory of Mega Man... The whole trajectory of Mega Man 8 is very strange. Because, like, they make Mega Man 8, and then Unifune is like, wait, this is a game for kids. Kids don't have PlayStation, they have Super Panic Cop. But then they, like, half backport it to the SNES as Mega Man base. That game's awful. Like, that game is way, way, way too hard. And if you've ever played the TVA version, it's the same game, but way harder, because you can't see anything. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. That's the one I Because that was the first version they localized. Mega time Man has died. It's time to chill. chill out a what are you gonna chill with? I'm not looking at the stream. Chill Man. Oh, Chill Man. This is... Like, Mega Man! It's really so man. hard! Chill Man? You already have Ice Man? Like, like a poor Ice Man knockoff? They don't care! Well, I guess, you know... Had, uh... Fireman and then Heat Man. Yeah, like seriously. And then Lukewarm Man. How did you feel about uh, how did you feel about all the times that like Dr. Wily was really obsessed with Guts Man? Guts Man showed up in a lot of Dr. Wily's designs, which is weird because he did not make Guts Man. But hey, Guts knows her. I want to meet, like, the Mega Man lore nerd that tries to swear away the, uh, American manual and send big heart. <laughs> Mega Man 1's crazy American manual, it's about, like, Monster Island. Good. <laughs> Should've picked easy mode. Should've picked easy mode. I told you! <laughs> the game is... Like, this is the thing that, like, probably made sure that no one really cared that much about Mega Man 10, except, like, super, like, true Doom, true Mega Man murderheads. <laughs> Mega was, Man murder like, like, it was, it's straight up, like, the only people that could finish it were people that had never stopped playing NES Mega Man. Like, and it's not even just the only people that can finish it, because, like, Mega Man 9 is also really hard. You can't even make appreciable progress into Mega Man 10 without being really good at Mega Man. It is, it is weird to haunt the sort of, the part of the internet that loves Mega Man without actually being very good at Mega Man. You see those people who are like, oh, those games are easy, and it's like, no, you just never stop playing them. <laughs> I'm just ranting this entire time. I honestly like some Mega Man games. Mega Man X is one of the best Super Nintendo games. And by the transitive property, one of the best games ever. I is really good. Two and three are really good. Yeah. One is I'm terrible at them. Garbage but... trash. Mega Man Powered Up is good though. Yeah. As long as you don't look at Japanese oil man. Please, please do not look at Japanese oil man. You're Say what? Oh no, he, he's just—he just looks like he's black. Yeah. He's, he's got a solid black face and like big orange eyes. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, they—they they color corrected him as hard as they could in the American version to make his lips 
yellower and his face purpler. It was... It was one of those, like, Jinx from Pokemon situations. Except unlike Nintendo, Capcom Japan didn't get the memo and kept using the uh, original coloration. That's actually an interesting thing to note, actually. Like, when Jinx got changed because people were like, wait a minute, this looks like Blackface. Nintendo Japan was like, okay, Jinx has changed everywhere. Yeah, because then it's just like, oh no, that is anomalous color incorrect art. The accurate color palette is this one that does not look like an offensive character. Uh... Yeah, like, Mega Man 10 is an interesting example of how a game that's not awful can still really hemorrhage goodwill. Mega Man 10 by itself is not terrible, it's too hard, but like, a big Mega Man fan will play it, and like, they'll be like, usually, I didn't like that as much as 9, but it's fine. But like, anyone who went in purely for nostalgia is like, I remember liking Mega Man, I can't get anywhere in this, I can't even tell if I like this. Yeah. As we're watching, in real time. But hey, you don't even have to play Mega Man 10 anymore, because Mega Man 9 is also bad. Which means that, ironically, the Xbox One is the only place that you can play Mega Man 9 and 10 on a modern console. Yeah. And they don't exist on PC. Yeah, like, they, like those never came out on PC. They could probably port them now, but, like, at this point, like, people would be disgusted unless they were 99 cents. Uh, yeah, they yeah, they've, they, like, I really do appreciate that they haven't just sort of, like, gotten some of the high-profile games and then called them good. Yeah. I mean, there's still some high-profile games left, too. I mean, there's, uh, Ninja Gaiden 2. Oh, that'd that. be good. That version is still better than Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2. <laughs> I, mean, I like I will don't don't leave that option open to me because I will continue to complain about the Ninja Gaiden <laughs> series under Yosuke Hayashi's tenure until my until my dying breath. So is Sigma one okay? Because I really, no. really am not I'm not expecting Black to ever end up on the Xbox. It won't, uh, but like Sigma 1, it's not as good either because it again, like it has the same problem as Sigma 2. Like, the Sigma engine couldn't support as many enemies on screen at once, so they just sort of re jiggered with, re jiggered them a bit so that they would have more health and decided that was close enough. Is that it's less, not actually less pronounced than 1 since that didn't have as it's many less enemies to begin with? It is less pronounced, but like they also just rejigger with things because it was the third version of the game inside of two years, so they didn't want people to think that they had already played it. Yeah. And some of the things they rejigger with are just like, oh, this is worse than it was in black. Yeah, we need a we need a re-release in black. Ninja Gaiden Black is still like. It's not a like it is in the character action action genre, but it's also why I think that it was important that character action be the term instead of stylish action, because both of them are terrible names. But stylish action refers to Devil May Cry's like enemies exist both as tart as like uh, as a hindrance, but also as a target. Whereas with Ninja Gaiden, they are only ever there to kill you, and you absolutely need to kill them as fast as you can. You don't have the chance to sit there and style them. Mega Man! Yeah, and I kind of like Ninja Gaiden's approach a little better. It's it's a shame. I, I feel like I just wish that there was another game that did that. Yeah. Like, most of the others, like... Don't re like the closest I can think of is like maybe Revengeance. Yeah. Which really en encourages you to like you need to go on the attack because you like it gives you tons of ways to restore your health, and that's because you need to. <laughs> yeah, 
kind of holding out that one to end up in there. I can see that one happening. I'm gonna wait a while and if it doesn't happen. There's also the PC version of that. I've heard that it was a fairly good port in any case. Speaking of ports, this guy too came out today and apparently includes a Mac and Linux version. Huh! So I'm like honor, honor bound to buy that now. That is I wonder if the unexpected. port is fun. Good question! Like, this Gaia, in its many ports, has often come uh, come along in some fashion, like, lessened for its trick, so... Yeah. I want to say Dark Hero Days had some bugs in its initial printing. I... It's, it's one of those things where, like, this is quality control can sometimes, uh, take beating. I hate this game. Are we still talking about Mega Man 10? <laughs> uh, okay. Hey, we can talk about this guy as a platformer. Oh, Prinny, can I really be the hero? Yeah. And Prinny too. Uh, um, the other Dawn time. of Operation Panties, I think? Yes, Dawn of Operation Panties. Hey, did you get the... Did you uh, get kicked out of your house for owning the pre-order bonus for that game? I did not get the pre-order bonus. I did not pre-order it, because I didn't like the first one. Good choice! I didn't pre-order it either. It's like, Freddy, can I really be the hero is one of those games where it's like, I really want to like this, and I hate it. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Yeah. It's not fun. It's, it's everything you don't like about Ghosts and Goblins. Minus anything you might have ever liked about Ghosts and Goblins. I mean, I think part of it is just probably done by developers who don't really understand the yeah, genre like, enough. It's fine. It's, it's not... Yeah, like, it's just... As far as I can tell, it didn't improve the sequel. No. <laughs> but that was also the period where they were, like, spinning this guy off into whatever genres they thought they could get away with. So it's also this guy in that period. Yeah. What a strange game. Yeah. That's interesting that, uh... Seems the series is doing a little better now with the game that I fucking hate it. And yet, I will probably convince you to play this guy if I've played. Yeah, I'm already gonna pre order it. I think, I think it's just one of those cases where it's. You know, I look, I, I look for. A, I look. I don't wanna say look. I look, look for a certain thing in the series. Cool level designs, crazy geo blocks that mess around. There are things that you want out of the series that want Right. So I think if I go into it and take it... Knowing what you're in for. Right. And focus more on messing up Really not being under the pressure of trying to finish it for a review as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, I it's mean, often I love... like something like... I, I love tactile RPGs, and they don't all have crazy new ones. Uh, Losing your one source of geo block. <laughs> yeah. It, it was a bit jarring. Um, but I mean... A drink of geo. That's what it is. And it wasn't as awful as this game. <laughs> what? What? Man, this, what the enthusiasm this for this entire idea just died so quickly. <laughs> I could have spent this $10 on Mega Man 9. Uh, you'll spend the $10 on Mega Man 9. That's a good game. Well, we can talk about some of the other platformers and whatnot. Probably gonna so it's, uh, Rocket, Rocket Knight. Knight. Yeah, now that that's backwards. Yeah. We should 
could uh, tag Tom on Twitter when that episode goes. Sure. I mean, I loved the original game when I was a kid, never played the sequel. It's pretty good. Yeah, that at some point, too. Like, it, it betrays its budget, in aspect, but it's good. What are we looking at? Alright, I'm gonna attempt one more stage, and I'm gonna do it as, uh... That reminds me of like, so now I'm just thinking about before this game came out. Uh, Alright, I'm doing easy mode. You remember, so. you, you remember Andrea Sun? Yeah. It was a, it was a website that like, it was just like a guy translating as many like Japanese phrases he could. And so sometimes some weird trend, like mistranslations slip through because like he either didn't have time to edit or like, you know, just wasn't familiar with the game being shown. So, like, they talked about uh, Proto Man mode in this game in previews. And in Japan, uh, Proto Man is called Blues. And so, Andre Sun was reporting on Bruce mode. <laughs> <laughs> Your favorite, Bruce mode. That was a good site while it lasted. It's like if you wanted to be able to see some of them like really going at every like news brief they could. <laughs> As it turns out, Proto Man mode is still hard. I'm also playing a deep mode. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to, I want to be able to beat one of these. Let me tell you about being introduced to classic Mega Man. Mega Man Dr. Wily's Revenge on the Game Boy. <laughs> oh, that's... Oh, if you ever wonder oh, why I don't actually like classic Mega Man that much, it's that. I mean, I, I played that game a lot as a kid, but it was, you know, it, I have some Mega Man on the go. It's impossibly hard. Yeah. Like, I have no- I don't think I ever finished a single boss fight in that version. Like, I- I had no other Mega Man games to play, I didn't know how to play Mega Man properly. And like... You get four bosses to fight at the beginning. You get a Mega Man who's way too large. You get some really good music. And you... <laughs> fall into a pit right at the beginning of a Left Man stage forever. Because one of the, I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's a Luck Man stage, starts with, like, a teleport block puzzle. I think the next Game Boy one. The two is much, much easier from what I've heard. I never played it. Uh, super Fighting Robot, Mega Man. We gotta get beat on for Sonic Heroes. Yes, I still want to do my absurd idea of, uh, Purple Scream. It's a terrible idea, but I do have it running in Delta, so... Yeah, it's, it's the best idea. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do my terrible idea of mashing them all together in one, ep one like, multi-screen episode. Video. No, I think I'll just that do, would be like... horrible. I think I'll just do three different versions of the video. Yeah, exactly. Who, who was going to play each team? I don't know if we determined that. Uh, I forget. Oh, we can we can resolve that with the yeah. But that's not like something he'd be doing. Grab that on the switch and just have it on the go forever. Ukulele? Oh man, that just went gold! Like, can yeah. you believe the fact that, like, of all the games to not go through hideous amounts of Kickstarter delays, it was the next Rareware dev game? Yeah. 
it's, it almost feels quaint to think about how much Rareware was associated with delays back up in the N64 era. This game was three months late! On the other hand, I think also ukulele was... Oh, man. On the other hand, I think ukulele was, was also in development for, like, like, got its ducks in a row before it was shown a lot more than other games, Yeah. So. Definitely. And they didn't but, go crazy. You know, congratulations to the ukulele game. Yeah. Looking forward to that. Um, I'm bringing this start doing some repeat episodes. Play. Instead of just doing the beginning of the game. We can go back to our race through Banjo Kazooie. Yeah. That will probably or I can be the continue first to one. pretend that it makes sense to brag about clowning on someone who's never played a game for a game that's been playing for 20 years. And also, since, since the, it was the game to kind of spurn the start of the series, uh, let me kind of retro. Oh man. That game is good. Oh man. When are they going to show us more of Insomniac Spider Man game? Uh, hopefully soon. I consider that an honorary platformer. Yeah. I feel like platformer to me encompasses a lot of, like, even if the game's not about jumping, if the game's fun, comes a lot of your ability to traverse. Oh, so we can do Ninja Gaiden? Uh, there are platformer segments in Ninja Gaiden. Are there any in 2? No, no, they cut back on them. Yeah, that's what I thought. 2 is really, really hard though, dude. Like... I'm sure. Like... 3 I don't, is hard. I don't... <laughs> three, is, 3 is not even a patch on 1 and 2, where 3 is hard, it's hard because it's stupid. But... Of course I mean 3 yeah, Razor's Edge, because I never played the original. Yeah, oh man, you've missed out on Masato Kato's meaningful situation where he has you sit in front of a dude who begs for his life and then you stab him in the front. Uh, ridiculously stupid. Yeah, oh, let me t Oh man, I learned something amazing about Ninja Gaiden recently. So, you know Yaiba, Ninja Gaiden Z? Yeah. I learned who directed that project. Who? At Spark Unlimited. Toby Guard, creator of Laura Croft. Really? Yup, it's on his LinkedIn. That is bizarre. And it was just like... <laughs> so many people came together to make something so terrible. <laughs> the video game debut of Mighty Number no. 9, Beck. Yeah, there was an unlockable back costume in that. Really? Yep. In, in that Ninja Gaiden game? What? Yeah, I have a Ninja Gaiden Z, yes. Because, because Keiji Inafune was the executive producer, and it was officially, like, oh, considered to be yeah. part of her concept scoop breath. That, Even though it was developed was, by Spark Unlimited. It was announced back then? When did when did that game yeah. come out? Yeah. Uh, <coughs> Mighty Number no. 9 or Yaiba? Yaiba? Yaiba was 2014. Oh. I think. It might have been 2013. Okay, Yiper. Yiper. Was released March of 2014, yeah. I feel like the thing that will make me hate life the most is the day that I am forced to play it. to play what? Ninja Gaiden 3? Z. Oh, no, Z. I played 3, it's terrible. So you haven't even played Yaiba? No, why would I play that after looking at it? Yeah. <laughs> you think I have no self-preservation instincts? No, I just have very bad ones. Now I want to stream Ninja Gaiden, there's only, only one problem. There's no good way to stream it. <laughs> yeah, that is the problem. Even if I get a streaming device, 
that I would have to probably be HDMI only, and I'd have to. And you'd have to yell at me for playing. Xbox 360 backwards compatibility. Um. Oh yeah. I upgraded Call them after like the first year having HDMI. Yeah, because I upgraded my 360 to the uh what was that model even called? The F. Yeah. The black one. There were a lot of 360 models for a while. Or are you talking about the Elite, which was the original model but painted black? No, no no, it's the newer model because well, my history with the original models were I had one that eight discs. Oh, and then, man. And then years later, um, the power supply for the other one melted, uh, melted oh, onto man. my entertainment center. That power supply is huge. You could kill him after that. Yeah, and I was like, nope, nope, this is leaving my house immediately. So I traded it in the game. I believe the upgraded one had its power supply built into the system itself, which probably got used. <laughs> um, it does not, but it, the power supply has, has like a fan in it or something. Like, it's a better power supply. <laughs> yeah, I swear it has a fan or something on it. Because you can hear it when the... When <laughs> Activate! <laughs> Yeah, that was the, that was pretty horrifying to like go and move the power supply for the 50 and it like, like what what the actual fuck? And I may not even notice it because this was just like packing stuff up to move. <laughs> Who knows what would have happened if I if I wasn't moving? Yeah, that's why it took me so long to finally get to buy an Xbox One. Yeah. And it was Halo 5 that did it. <laughs> yeah. I think it was Halo 5 combined with uh, the backwards compatibility thing. Like the the backwards compatibility thing was really nice. Yeah. The only thing that could convince you to pick up a new system was something that would make it so you never had to have a 360. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and it really, it's already gotten rid of, like, most of my, uh, most of my list of games. Most of your holdout games. Most of them. Uh, most of the remaining ones are, like, nice to have, like, uh, here. Uh, what else? Uh, I feel like we would be getting near on backwards <laughs> compatible compatibility right about now if near on top of it's coming back. Uh, this is Kawazu game on 360. Game Last Remnant. Yeah, but I, you know, I have that on PC, so that that's really enough. Nice. Really, I don't know why I would need to play. This. It's mostly a collector's item. So. Yeah, you already uh, have it. Resonance of Fate would be the big one. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, though. Uh, well, in Ninja Gaiden too. That would be nice. How do you feel? How do you feel about Magna Carta? Uh, I sold my copy. Not here. Yeah, I still have a copy of that for some reason. I'm not sure why. What else do I still have? I have um, uh, Infinite Undiscovery. No. So other game I think I have some random, like, Tom Clancy games. Like, whatever, they're available. Tom Clancy, Tom Clancy, Tom Clancy. Yeah. But I mean, at this point, the... Featuring Tom Clancy? <laughs> the backwards compatibility library, especially, shockingly, for platformers, is fantastic. <laughs> you can play Barnjo Kazuki, Nuts and Bolts. Yeah. Not, you don't even have to get the uh, coll collections. Although you should get the collection. Yeah. Because that, that collection is fantastic. 
You got a new weapon, the wheel cutter. Oh, Why didn't you tell me about this? I didn't best, remember that. Best eight bit It's probably kind of a bad weapon. So the moral of the story is this is the best Mega Man game. That's not even. You don't even believe that. <laughs> no, I don't. All right. Uh, Video games are over. I got I got the wheel weapon. I'm done. We're going we're going to the hillbilly horror. Club. Yes, we are. Uh, all right. So I'm gonna end it on that. Uh, we'll see you next. Turn this off. <laughs> I don't know. Stretch. I still have not mastered the Xbox One's freaking <laughs> UI.